Divine Truth Assistance Group. These group assistance sessions are about putting principles of divine truth into action. This discussion is part of the 2014 Australia Group 1 series. Mary discusses homework on challenging addictions. Filmed on the 17th of July 2014 in Monterey, New South Wales, Australia. Okay. Ready with your homework? So I talked to you guys about practically challenging an addiction from an emotional perspective. Very quickly, before we start, who can remember the different things I said were elements of challenging an addiction? What was the first thing you had to do? Pete. Acknowledge you've got one. Yes. Recognise the addiction. Okay, what was the next thing that we had to do, Barbara? Um, feel our emotional response. Yes, so there we were talking about these two sides. So we, we realised, whoa, that was just an addiction that got meant. Wow, I felt really... Gr a lot of the things that you talked about with Cornelius this morning. Or when it didn't get met, how that felt. Okay, so recognise how we felt. Uh, how can I summarise that? So our response, let's call it that. What was the next thing I said, Christiana? Don't judge it. Don't judge it. Now, to me, this is like the first phase, if you like, of a process that we're going into. And remember, I said, this is about doing this emotionally. A lot of you are really good at doing it intellectually, as you did with Cornelius this morning. Now, I find it really interesting that there's one massive thing that's missed out that applies to these three things. What was that, Teresa? What else do we have to do? Um, see the error in what it is, that, how it hurts others and ourselves. Yes. So how did we summarise that in the talk? What did I call that? The sin. The sin. Okay. So this is about feeling the sin, isn't it? So that's my funny bracket. Okay. What came next? Luli? Luli? Um, don't feed the addiction. Don't feed the addiction. And why? What else? Deidre? What's our motivation for? Uh, because we want to expose the emotion underneath. Yes. This is really crucial, our motivation. So we're going to do the opposite, if you like, in order to expose the emotion. in order to feel what lies beneath. Okay, what's the next thing that will naturally start to happen? Dane? Uh, feel the addiction and feel how much we want it and why. Yes. And now this is a very adult, and if you like, this is like when we're still in the adult facade, this group of feelings. In this group of feelings, we encounter all of our false beliefs about the addiction, if you like, when we feel like that getting this addiction met is love. At this point, we're going to feel, man, I was feeling this is love. I really want that. I can't. Now I recognise it's an addiction. That kind of feeling. Okay, so we're confronting more truth at this point. We're going through the process of releasing the adult facade about this addiction, which Jesus talked you through that whole process that you're going to have to go through. Okay, so feel the addiction. Okay, this is like phase two, if you like. Now the magic starts. What happens next? Joellen? We feel the feelings of the hurt self. Yes. 
This is, this is when the addiction has the, is going to leave us, when we make that next step. The truth is we can do here to here and then we'll go back to having the addiction and we'll do here to here and it'll get really circular and painful until we make that step to feel the hurt self. And that's a lot about dealing with the adult facade's judgment of the hurt self that I talked to you about the other night. Okay, so let's feel the feelings underneath the hurt self. What happens after that, Vlad? Oh, no, the increased sensitivity. Yeah, so what did I mean by that, do you reckon? Um, feeling the hurt self, like being really sensitive to connecting to that. Yeah, sure, we're going to have more sensitivity. Because we've connected to the hurt self, we're going to feel more of the pain and that's been driving this addiction. But because we do that, we're then going to start to see, oh, this addiction is not just in this one area, it's in all those other areas, in all those other relationships. Now I'm sensitive to this. I can feel where I've been avoiding it in all these other places. I'm going to have, have more work to do, really. And come to think of it, I can feel this has been damaging. This has been damaging me. It's been dam damaging other people. We get an increased sensitivity to the sin. And so then we might find ourselves naturally going through this process again and again. Sound all right? Okay, let's go to homework. Who remembers the first question that actually it was the second question I asked you we want to deal with first, the one I put up on the board the next day. Who remembers what that one was? Suzanne? Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Sue. Discover why I haven't already been engaging the emotional process of channeling the addiction. That's right. So why hasn't, given everything that I know about addictions that I've heard over the years, why hasn't this already been starting to happen as a soul process for me? And the second part to that question was... Uh, Graham? Uh, what is the cause of my resistance? Yes, the cause of my current resistance, my current which is, resistance. it's a really one question that we're going to answer together. There's sort of two parts to it. So why haven't I already been doing it is another way of saying, why am I currently resistive? What, what is causing my current resistance? So what did you guys come up with? Okay, Luli. Um, I don't believe that if I give up my addictions... I'll ever experience any pleasure in my life ever again. Yeah, I know that one. I felt that one. So that's kind of like a lack of faith, isn't it, in the process that anything good's going to come. Yeah. Who else? Laura? Um, I always come to, I don't really want to see the reality of my, my childhood. I don't want to see the reality. So why, what's so, driving that? Designed to not see the truth. Um, so, for example, I can cry that I'm not being loved by the male, but then as soon as I focus it on my dad, I just go like, no, nah, it's not, like, I don't. And I'm like, yeah, avoid, uh, avoidance to break the fantasy of what I'm holding on to with all my facade. I agree. That's your resistance. What's the feeling driving that resistance? What's the feeling? What do you believe or what do you feel? That if I that pop point? that bubble, I have, um, that, that's who I am, like a, a complete identification with the facade. So you don't want to let go of the facade. I have resistance, Mary, right yeah, now, yeah, but yeah. good probe. Yeah. So you don't want to let go of the facade. Yeah. Why? That's, I feel that's who I am and the distress of it all being a lie, my whole life being a lie. Yeah, I don't think that's why. I think that might be an associated feeling, but there's okay. something you got close to when you said, when I think about it in relation to my dad, what is the feeling that you have? Um, it's I, a fear. I just don't want to. 
Like, it's just I don't, I don't want to. Well, you don't want to feel the fear. I agree. But there's a fear. I would, I would, that's the cause of your resistance that you need to identify if you're ever going to deal with addiction, what this fear is. When you get to that place, you're afraid of something. So it's not the, I thought it was a fear of reality, but it's a lot more than. Well, what's reality for you? Pain. What do you believe reality is? Oh, what do I want it to be? No, or what, what do you it believe is? it is in that place? You say you're afraid of reality. I'm not afraid of reality anymore because it's good. God governs the universe. It's all going to be okay in the end. That's the truth. That's reality. But that's not what Laura feels. What do you feel when you get to that place? Um, it's okay. Sit with it. I'm it's just, Yeah, yeah. I think you have some beliefs about yourself that you're afraid of feeling are true, yeah, and afraid of the pain in your childhood. All right, uh, Karen. But they're the kind of feelings that we're going to have to face if we're going to get through this resistance. Sorry, Karen, yep. Yeah. I wrote, I don't like doing things that feel too hard and I've had a lifetime of forcing myself so I feel rebellious. I don't want to do it. Yes, so there's a rebellion. That's an anger at having to, you feel like it's a duty that you have to do a job. Yeah. So again, you're not seeing the benefits of what you have to do. Yeah. Well, no. Okay, cool. Uh, if we go to Margaret and then over here to Louise. Um, that I'm unlovable and a failure. And so therefore God doesn't love me, so... So you get to this, you get to the feeling of your resistance and then you face a false belief? From God's perspective, yes. Yes. Which you're very resistive to even saying is not a truth yeah. right now, aren't you? Right, yeah. yeah. Because from my perspective, it's not the truth. Yeah. Yep. yep, and you don't want to feel that. Right. And so, yes, you go into addiction. I agree, yeah. Louise? Um, mine's a justification and a victimisation one that... I have such little pleasure in my life anyway, so what's the harm? Yeah, what's the harm in That's staying in the addiction? And you obviously <laughs> believe if I deal with the addiction, it's less pleasure. Definitely. Isn't it funny what we tell ourselves, hey, when the reverse is completely true, but it's a product of the fear? Yeah. Okay, if we come to Rizza on this side, is there anyone else? On, um, Melinda on that side after Rizza? Doubting my ability to survive the process. Yep, so you have sort of a fear. That or to handle gonna... what's going to come up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That you're not going to be able to deal with it and feel your way through it all. Cool. Melinda? Um, mine's that I don't want to forgive, like I want to blame, like I want to, I want to be angry and I just don't want to forgive. That's where mine I agree that's the place you've been stuck at for a long time. But what's the belief underneath that? That's what you'll have to feel. The belief under the feeling that you do. Why don't you want to forgive is the question you'll need to answer emotionally. Because I don't want the overwhelm. Yeah, I agree. You panic. No, Jesus does not agree. Okay. I want my addiction. That's, I, need, well, I need a bit more time to feel into that. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, you want to uh, step in because... I, if you can see it clearly, it's good. He'll get you. And um, you might want to put the mic on me, the camera on me. Yeah, she's yeah. got you. Okay. And I've got it on Mel. I'm just making sure. <laughs> Mel, feel the feeling. Feel the feeling. You, you're really, really angry, right? What do you want to do to the persons that harmed you? What do you want to do to them? Just be honest about it. I want to yell at them. Yeah, what else do you want to do? You want to yell at them and... I tell them it's not my fault. It's not fair. Yeah, yeah. What else do you want to do to them? I want to really destroy them. Like, I want to... I want to, like, attack them. I want them to feel what I'm feeling. Yeah, this, this is what you want. So feel that. Don't tell yourself other things. Feel that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You kind of go, oh, I don't want to forgive, and then you punish yourself, don't you? Rather than. I don't know what I do anymore. 
<laughs> okay, uh, Barbara. Um, I don't challenge my addictions because I just don't see them as a sin or that they're harming other people. Yeah. 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 Who else felt that? When they really got down to it, they found it hard to identify the sin in the addiction. Good. Probably half of everyone. Yeah. I feel that's a real area where, as a group, it's important to look. It's where the... You've intellectually done a lot of work, but there's not been your heart wake up to the truth about all of this. And so that indicates that there's a resistance to truth about the impact of your addictions and a resistance to feeling about that. But I would start even just at the truthfulness of... When I spoke to some people over dinner last night and I was speaking about, they were asking me questions, you know, I found it hard to connect to, why is sexual, sexual projection a real sin? Now, there's a lot of information that you've heard that you could apply to that to actually intellectually even reason why it is such a sin. What happens when you sexually project at someone else? Uh, Dave? Um, you're interfering with the other people's soulmate relationship and then you're breaking your own? You're breaking your own. You're trying to break theirs. What else, what else is involved from a truth perspective? You're, I mean, that's pretty major, isn't it, if you think about it? You're also, like, forcing yourself onto somebody else as well. So you're not honouring free will? Mm. Yeah. Um, and then you're just basically just putting yourself into just this barter situation as well. Barter situation, you're already obviously in your addiction denying emotions and so you're inviting spirits to be involved in that interaction as well. So there's a whole heap of things that you've already heard about intellectually that you can now work on connecting to emotionally. But a lot of you guys that sort of sit down and go, oh, what is the tr uh, sin, feel bad? And there's a tendency to self-punish. But that's not actually connecting to the sin of it because when I talk to you, to some of you about it, you couldn't even think of those very valid, truthful things about what sexual projection does. So this is where if you are resistive to connecting to this idea of it being a sin, you're going to find intellectually you chuck out a whole heap of stuff as well. So you have to get real with yourself about that, hey decide, do I really want to deal with this? And maybe I'm going to have to deal with some of the other lack of faith feelings or recognise some truth about my real desires. So for Mel, that was really powerful when Jesus just said, no, what do you really want to do? If you get that honest with yourself, then you go, oh, okay, it's getting harder and harder to deny that actually I do have a sin going on here. But a lot of us are still in the facade, if you like, even with ourselves, examining what the addiction what the sin of the addiction if you like yeah okay anyone else um something different in your resistance to dealing engaging the emotional process wasn't it yeah yeah i wasn't recognizing my false beliefs as emotional so uh -huh. that was just blocking me to <laughs> yes the yeah that's a really good point, actually, isn't it? Because we think beliefs, oh, it's all in your head. Yeah, but uh, just do away with them and then I'll be fine. <laughs> yes, but it's not like that at all. Yeah. yeah. Great. Thanks, Rachel. Uh, Eloisa? Mine is just that it's never, ever going to end and I'm going to be like in that. So it's the fear of the overwhelm, but that it's just going to go on forever and then it's going to become this like barrage of emotion that I've already had enough of my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mean dealing with the addiction is going to be like that? That's what you believe? I just said, yeah, I have this really weird like fear that I'm going to end up kind of a bit like them and that it just will never stop. Like once I start. Once you start feeling or yeah. start dealing? Once I start feeling, yeah. like it's just going to be so big. Yeah. That... <laughs> yeah, and that's the false belief. Yeah. So the false belief is one that you feel you'll be more like the people – that you're attempting to forgive when you start feeling. Yeah. Which is actually the, re the reverse is true. Yeah. Because the time we damage people is when we don't feel. Yes, yes. So I'm already more like them now, in a sense, while I'm not feeling. Yes. And I'm afraid that if I just allow the feelings. And it's not like 
my little growing faith is saying, no, that's not true, that's not true, feels better, but that is still something that I'm not willing just to go and be really humble to. Yeah, so the fear of the overwhelm plays into that one as well. Yeah. Okay, anyone else? Uh, David and Paul. If we go to Paul first and let David get the mic, yeah? Um, I feel like I need it to survive and that I won't be okay or safe without it. Mm Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So if you don't get this addiction met, you are there's no survival. Yeah, and, and, and I'm I'm nothing or I'm not okay unless I get this addiction. So yeah. the worth, a lot of your worth yeah. is tied up with yep. getting this addiction. Yeah. So there, a lot of it actually is an unwillingness to feel a lack of worth, isn't Th- that's it? That's mm. it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Thanks. Uh Dave? Uh, my lack of will to, to go there and to honestly look at it. So what is driving the lack of will? Because I think we've all established we lack will to do it. So what is your particular thing that's making you not want to do it? Uh, a lack of faith. Mm-hmm. So a lack of faith that it will change things? Yeah, but I think it's more a lack of faith in God and a lack of faith in myself. Yeah, so lack of faith that you'll be able to get through it or that God will care for you at the end of it. Particularly that one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, a couple more and then we'll move on to the next question. If we go to Cecilia next today. Uh, Mine is a lack of desire for for love, love for others and myself and God. Can you explain that one to me a little bit? Um, I'm thinking this is just my intellectual working out of this if I haven't been engaging the emotional process, it must be because I'm lacking of lo- desire for love. But not my definition of love, but God's definition of God's love. God's definition? Yeah. Yep. So be careful with doing your homework from an intellectual space because it will be limited, the results. So anyone who's engaged intellectually, go home and try to work at it from your heart. Feel why you want to resist. But I don't know if I agree with your answer, Cecilia. I know that you have an addiction to punishing yourself and so I think sometimes you sit down and go, oh, well, it's because I'm terrible and I don't actually want to love. Yes, that's what I feel. I think your resistance to dealing with addiction is actually more closely related to fear Mm -hmm. which, sure, when we have fear, we lack a sincere desire to love. But while you're just saying that about yourself, I think you're not dealing with the real feelings that you have, the fears that are driving your resistance, if that makes sense. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. All right, one more, and then we'll move on to the next question. Joanne? Um, I'm not sure if my reason is coming from my facade or not, but... In, in feeling the hurt, I feel that I have to blame someone and to me that's hurting them. I know that's not true. And I think my fear is that I fear the repercussion of having hurt someone. So you have a belief that when you feel your real emotions, you'll be hurting other people? Yes. While I agree that some of us definitely have that false belief... I do suspect it is your facade answering this question. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, let's move on to the next question, which was, oh, have a go at challenging an addiction emotionally. Who reckons they had a good shot at it? Who reckons they? Yeah, Louise? Well, that's only a little one, but um, I'm finding the not eating between 9.30 and 4 very challenging. Like, I'm really sticking to it today, but I'm feeling a bit woozy. And Who else has been struggling with that particular one? There's a few, yep, yep. So on Monday, I think it was about 1.30 p.m. or 2. I don't think I had nuts, but I might have. I went outside in the break and I started feeling irritated and I just wanted this I was ravenous for this big meal not just a nut yeah and um and for the first time in six years I started feeling bored with the divine love 
talks. Bored, did you say? Yeah, yeah. I've never been bored before, but yeah. that day I felt, no, nah, I'm just bored. Yeah. But I didn't eat my nuts and stuff and came back into the next session and all this emotion came up out of me. I mean, it could have been fake and deceptive emotions, but just I, something, was something you said, I think you were talking about addictions and I just started crying, well, it felt quite deeply. Um, mm-hmm. So it feels like a small thing, but because, you know, you gave us the task of, you know, looking at the steps, I was yep. quite surprised that it was only half an hour later that, that it's... I just started sort of weeping about something, which I don't think I even knew what it was about. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Isn't it amazing how we build it up like it's going to be bad and it's going to be hard and oh my gosh and then we just use that will muscle just a little bit and suddenly emotion comes up, doesn't it? I think you had a similar experience, didn't you, Rani, with the food issue? Do you want to say something about that? Thanks. Yeah, I was a mess the first day. Um, I just so much fear was coming up uh, and I just kept on allowing myself to really just feel it. Um, and then after I saw you, I just went back and same thing. I don't know what it's about. I just let it kind of come up and that was it. Yeah. Yes. And then ever since I've been fine. <laughs> yeah. With, with the, the food anyway. With the food yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, I bumped into Rani midway through and she was saying, I just can't cope with not eating. Um, I, and you said to me at the time, this is before we discussed addictions, you said, I know I usually eat to suppress fear and I just can't handle it. It's, uh, but you were really brave and you did just let yourself be overwhelmed, hey? Yeah, yeah it's great. It is, that's the strength in of your will muscle. Cool. I didn't say anything. You did it for yourself. So it's good. Yeah. <laughs> All right, who else? Nina? I just realised how strong and powerful addictions are because I just got totally disorientated. It's almost like I didn't know which way was up, you know, and it's just like it was just the strangest, oddest feeling. And was that just at the thought of challenging No, I did it. You did it. So do you want to tell us what you did? What happened? Well, I challenged, I don't know how much detail I actually feel I can go into, but I challenged my addictions around Facebook basically and just... Yeah, it didn't go where I normally would go with that. And it just like, I just got really disorientated. It's just, I couldn't understand that. So do you feel, so you didn't engage with something that on, on the internet that you yep. usually yep. would? Yep. And disorientation sounds like fear maybe? Or you yeah. still don't know what it is? Well, I'm not sure what it is, but it's yeah. just like almost like, just disorientation, really, and it's kind of like I feel it's really critical now what I do with this disorientation. Exactly, because really you're just starting to expose something. Yeah. something. Yeah. And this is the exciting thing about challenging your addiction. It's like a loss of something, you know, and it's just something that obviously I don't need. But, yeah, yeah. so it was pretty big just to end up in that place. I was kind of surprised how disorientated I actually felt. Awesome, yeah. yeah. So this is the thing, when you start to challenge, like, before that, every emotion is theoretical. You're going, well, I think I've got this addiction because I'm afraid of this and I don't want to feel that. And then you remove the addiction with a sincere desire. doesn't help if you do it just through willpower. But if you have a semi-sincere desire to find out what's underneath and you do the opposite of the addiction, now the journey of discovery begins. And you're not going to necessarily get from those steps of like just expose, um, the, feel the addiction, get to the hurt child, boom, it's over in one afternoon. No, it could be, like me with the chocolate balls, we're still in the experiment. We're still discovering the emotions, you know. Yeah, but and it, is, it, it is becomes fear more real, doesn't yeah, it? I'm, it is fear because I am trembling. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. Who else? Christiana. Um, I haven't really um, addressed an addiction this week, but uh, last year um, I decided to give up. Can I stop you there? Yes. Because I just want to talk about what we did since the last session. Okay. Okay. So if you just pass back to Glenn. Um, I'm a needy little bugger. (laughs) (laughs) That's what you discovered? (laughs) Oh, yeah. 
Um, so how did you <laughs> challenge that addiction? Um, well, about four days in a row, like I see what um, couples are supposed to do. Um, and about four days in a row, I went to sit down and I sat somewhere and like DJ would have been inside and um, getting her dinner and she walked straight past me and sat somewhere else and it happened about four times in a row. And I was like, first couple of days, I'm going, she don't want to sit with me, you know. So um, I was kind of challenged because I go passive-aggressive underneath and get angry and um, because I demand that I want Deidre to come and sit with me, I don't do that outside, I wouldn't have told her. So you don't get up and go no. and find her and sit with her no. and go, no. hey, why didn't you want to sit with me? I want to sit with you. Yeah. You just sit there and go. Yeah. 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 And, but later I'll speak with her about it, but the anger just builds. Um, so the challenge was to actually look at why I wanted to do that and I seen some ne- a few needy things. I didn't get right into it, but I could see what I was doing. And I spoke to Deirdre and just said, look, I'm sorry I've been needy. And I've been wanting you to sit with me and I just want to say that um, you can sit wherever you like and I'm sorry that I've done that. And um, she's now finding me and sitting down and having dinner and I don't want to just press that on her instead. Just Yeah, there's probably a lot of relationship dynamics. Yeah. We could probably have another session <laughs> yeah, like uh, yeah, Jesus yeah, just had yeah, with the other couple. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I won't go too deeply into yeah, it. But, but it's cool that you recognised your neediness. Yeah, yeah. And that's the thing I'm more worried about that on because it's not over. I've got 50, 80 things about exactly the same need and issue. But and I feel the challenge, the challenge yeah. for you, Glenn, will just be yeah. to start to recognise at the moment you're not sensitive to how pervasive that addiction is for you yeah. with women. Yeah. You know, you've begun the process yeah. and we've talked about yeah. that. Yeah. Um, but for you, to, you're going to start saying, oh, there it is again, there it is again. And to challenge that as you feel that, you'll start to expose even more emotions. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. No worries. Barbara? I have to start off with saying my first attempt to face this particular addiction, I failed. <laughs> but What happened? What it was was that um, I have a need all the time to, I don't like the awkward silence or if somebody's feeling uncomfortable. Okay, just talk for a second. That's an awkward silence for you, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just that one. Yeah. <laughs> um, millisecond. Yeah. And um, so at dinner the other night, I challenged it. Um, so I never, I didn't jump in and say something. So I, I recognised that that's what I was going to do. So I stopped myself, but I got up and got another plate of food to avoid it. Uh huh. You substituted something else. Yes. Another thing yes. to suppress yes. whatever's underneath. And I got back, and the awkward silence was gone, and the topic had changed, and I was fine. Yeah. So yes. So that was attempt number one, wasn't it? That, that was attempt number one. What happened in attempt number two? I haven't done that. That's tonight. That (laughs) That was only last night. It's tonight. (laughs) All right. Good reflection, though. (laughs) To notice what you did in order to avoid. Yeah. Yeah. So I got I got to the recognition recognition stage, and then not to automatically speak, but then I avoided my own discomfort and got some more comfort. Yes. In another direction. Exactly. That's that sleazy customer thing happening. Slippery customer. Slippery customer, not sleazy. Yeah. 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 Yeah, definitely. That's what Jesus called Barbara one day. She's a slippery customer. (laughs) Um, I want to highlight something to you guys, and it's the element of sin in your addictions. To me, I feel like if you guys went off to do your homework and the only thing you connected to emotionally was Feeling my addiction is a sin. From God's perspective, I'm harming myself and others. And you felt that emotionally? I feel that's great work. And I feel that actually you would go, I'm so sad I just rubbed off those steps because I want to keep referring to them. You would go through those other steps that I mentioned with a lot more drive once you recognise the sin aspect. A lot of you are still trying to expose the emotions underneath without fully recognising the sin of what's in play. And so it's going to be limited. 
Now, you might have some results, and that might resensitize you or make you even more sensitive to the sin, or even just begin your sensitivity to the sin. But please don't underestimate the feeling aspect of the sin of it. Because once you do that, it'll get easier because you've suddenly got motivation. Instead of feeling like, you know, all the other resistances you guys said to me in the beginning, you were saying, look, I feel like this is my only chance for happiness. When you confront that false belief with some truth and some feeling of your false belief, then you're going to go, oh, that was totally bonkers. It's sin. It's gross. It's hurting me and other people. I'm not... Your motivation changes. But this is such an important part of the feeling process, which is why I wanted to focus you in on what is your emotional resistance right now? Because feeling through those false beliefs, the lack of faith or the fear of the truth of your childhood and what that means for you and all those things, feeling those things is going to change the rest of letting go of addictions for you. Does that make sense? Teresa? Um, I don't actually feel motivated to stop sinning. So you don't feel motivated to stop sinning? To stop sinning, yeah. Yeah. So what do you feel about it? I feel that it's deserved. That you're entitled to sin? You... Or that your treatment of others is deserved? Yeah. Which I do feel comes from this injury that a lot of us have from childhood of entitlement. I'm entitled to have what I want, and I know that's one for you. And that's where our hurt child's been injured, not just with people punishing us or treating us in a really unloving way. It's been injured when we've been not loved by being fed false beliefs. When we've been spoiled, then there's been no consequences, when there's been no, all these things. And that's a part of stuff we're going to have to release. So I would start there, Therese. I actually feel that that's real progress for you to recognise that, to explore that and to feel the entitled feelings that you have towards sinning. Because when you let go of that, your life is actually going to change. Thank you. No worries. Eloisa? Um... I had a reluctance to share, actually, <laughs> but just That's with... I know it's not normal. It's because I feel so bad about it. Yeah. <laughs> and it just relates to Teresa's. Having created an entitled child, mm -hmm. um, I went down and the addiction is that um, I'm terrified of any rage that's going to come to me from a woman. Mm -hmm. So I try and feed Isabella's addiction as much as I can. And the other day, oh, yesterday. Can I just stop you for a second? Because it's actually started even before then, didn't it? It starts with you not feeling loved by your mum. Yes. So you have a girl child. And yes. instead of wanting to love her, you want love from her. Yeah. And I want her, I want her to love me you like my mummy like didn't. Yes. And I so yes. badly want that. So then she becomes has these feelings of entitlement. Yes. And now you're faced with the situation of like, uh-oh, I've done something that's not good for her. And actually, it's hard for me now too. It's really hard. And now she's potentially going to rage at me. Yep. And she, she, since we've been having all these discussions and I can't pinpoint everything that's happened, but our kids have just gone like, it's, it's good. They're starting to like, she's raging. She's in a sulk pretty much constantly at the moment. The boys are starting to like cry or have all these things and stuff going on. But with Iz, like yesterday for the first time, I just was like, can see what I've created and I can see how damaging that is for her and every single person who she interacts with. Like, she doesn't have friends. She gets bullied. She gets, she gets harmed because of what I was unwilling to love her for. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's, I'm beginning to see the sin that I've yeah. created and yeah. the effect that it's having on another soul. And then she's harming others as well. So it's not just that she's getting harmed from my harm. 
she's harming from my harm yeah. and it's going to create this whole other cycle of harm. So it's pretty yucky when, yeah. when, you, when I feel about that. Yeah, but it's you're kind good of being too. an awesome parent right now. <laughs> it's very, yeah. <laughs> feels like one time. <laughs> and it does feel better. Like inside, I'm, and I think that's why I didn't want to share is I'm so scared. I'm so scared now. Like, what do I do now? It's like, I can go back to the addiction, or I can, and I want to. There's yeah. a big part of me that wants to, but it's so yucky now. And this is, the, that's, thank you. That's exactly my point. When you sensitise yourself to the sin, you might still want it, but, oh, it feels gross now. And now we have more motivation. We have, we're more willing to face fear in the other direction. And, but you're right, you still have a choice. And sometimes, some of us still make the choice for sin, even though we feel gross, because we just don't want to use that will muscle. And I and think I'm afraid of doing that too. Yeah, yeah. Because I've done it many times, yeah. you know. But can you feel the difference? Like how many times have we talked about that issue with his heaps? Yeah. And you've seen it intellectually, like lots of you guys see the issue with the addiction intellectually. Um, but now that you've had this feeling yesterday and you feel the sin more rather than just thinking it, how's your motivation level, the will muscle, going now? Well, heaps better. Like today, she's just been in a sulk and we restrained her. And for the first time, Jesus, it wasn't really hard. <laughs> it was like, no, this is right. And this is like, I don't, I don't want her to get like me. Yeah. I, or, well, I don't want her to be like my mum. Yeah. And that's what I'm creating. Yeah. You know, and yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Ello. That's a great place to finish, I reckon. Does everyone understand there what I was meaning about the sensitising yourself to the sin? And now Eloisa and Pete have been engaged in that process of intellectually understanding, going through, remember, the deconstruction process that Jesus talked to you about all those steps for a number of years now about their kids. But they stayed with it, they desired some truth, they want to hear about it, they want to see things. A lot of you guys fall down when it comes to, okay, I've heard it, now how am I going to examine it all? You, they want to see it in their life, they want to look at, okay, what's going on here? What's going on there? Was that it there? Oh, actually, what are the repercussions? Let me observe my child, let me look at all these different things. And it's the same for you guys with any kind of addiction. Now, eventually, if you keep growing your will to love and you... And it doesn't have to take a process of years. For some of you, I've already been engaged in that process already intellectually. Now it's a matter of taking that step emotionally to open up your heart to feeling about that. It's about staying engaged in that process. And it will get easier when you feel this bit. All right. Thanks so much. I've so enjoyed talking about addiction. So thanks for doing, having a great conversation. Um, Jesus, would you like to add anything? Because I wanted to uh, offer that, invite that. <laughs> cool. So why don't we have, oh, I think we're nearly, do you want to do one more personal truth session? No. It's, it's nearly 3.30. Yeah. Yep. So we'll go for dinner. I think it's so quite a, yeah. If I can just have, yep. Yeah, so what we might do is now give you guys a bit of a break from all of that. That was a pretty intense afternoon. <laughs> talking about all those things and feeling some of those emotions that you're feeling. And, uh, and so probably the best thing, I'll just join Mary for a sec. Um, so probably the best thing, I think, is we have a bit of a break for half an hour because that's all you've got, so 3, 3.28. And, um, and we have dinner. Tonight, what, we, what would you like to do tonight, if anything? Would you like to just have time to reflect a bit more or what would you like to do tonight? Tomorrow we've got your forgiveness, repentance uh, review and maybe a few more personal truth sessions. Yeah. There will be some more personal truth sessions tomorrow. Tomorrow will be our last day for personal truth sessions, actually, because the, following, the, the, follow, the final day we're not doing any of them. We're just giving you three presentations in a row. Have we got another movie? Yep, I'm sure we could find some. Would you like, did, have you been enjoying having the movies? Yeah. yeah. Just between dinner and supper like that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nina? Yeah. 
yeah, maybe. I was wondering if anyone would be willing to do some mediumship. <clears throat> Not I. Sorry. We, uh, we feel that many of you have become addicted to it, to be honest. And, um, and often not learning the lessons that are present there in the mediumship itself. And this time in this se these sessions, we really wanted to focus you on the personal work you needed to do rather than focusing your attention outwards to focus your attention inwards. Does that make sense? So for that reason, we've purposefully chosen to not do any mediumship for these sessions and including next week and we're trying to focus you on just this personal work which will help you immensely in all areas of your life <coughs> so that's why we've chosen to do that we also i've uh, we also have the option of karaoke should you want to embrace that at some point so that's an option for tomorrow night Cornelius does. <laughs> <laughs> he's just been a rock star back there <laughs> And then you focus the camera on him and he goes... <laughs> <laughs> he runs away. Um, yeah, so we can do that. We have that all set up with, a long, with about 7,500 songs or so as well. So and that's all ready to go pretty much. I've just got to do one more technical thing, so that will be a tomorrow night thing. So what, a bit, what if we do a, a movie tonight? And what if we choose the movie instead of leaving it open for everybody to choose? How does that sound? We'll try and choose a movie that most of you probably wouldn't have seen. How's that? You know, I, think, I think we've got a good idea which one that Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, and then tomorrow night we might have a stab at some karaoke. And if I could grab Fab, if he's around, just, yeah. and we can have a bit of a chat about Saturday night. What? Fabio might be off the music challenging an addiction. Is that right? Yeah. We'll, uh, it's all right, I'm we'll just kidding around. We'll have a chat and we'll see what we might be able to organise Saturday night because Saturday night will be our last evening. Mm -hmm. So there is now really only two days left for, for till the end of the session. Who's been counting down? Who's been counting down? <laughs> no. <laughs> so when's this all going to stop? When's this all going to stop? <laughs> Uh, we've enjoyed your company. How, how are you going enjoying each other's company? Yeah? You met some new people? Met some new people yeah. and yeah. get to know them a little or, yeah, that's good. Yeah, it's always a good thing. Alan? I'm just curious, are you going to take the next group through the same process? Yes. Okay. It'll exactly. be obviously yeah. slightly different because we'll have uh, hopefully improved. Refined. <laughs> Refined. Eh? So we were the guinea pigs. Though. <laughs> yeah, you're the guinea pigs. No, yeah. you got the raw passion. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They'll get the more polished. They'll get the polished. <laughs> uh, um, ho refined, hum. yeah. <laughs> version. No, no, it's not like that. No, we, we've, uh, we feel quite... The reason why we wanted two in a row, actually, we were looking forward to having two in a row because we feel that uh, there'll be different reflections from each group and the second group actually has far more spirit influence than you or your group has so the people coming along to the second group uh, are quite intensely influenced by spirits a number of them, yeah. so that that will you know be interesting in terms of how everyone will handle those particular things and um, yeah so they are they will be different because of the people present but uh, in terms of the subject matter, no, we're all going to present very similar subject material. Because it it's been such a, a valuable experience. I could, you couldn't not do it with them, you know. Just, yeah. That's what I felt. Yeah, like it's just, that's what we feel. Yeah. We've been guided like little children along. You know? That's our intention. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> little hurt children. <laughs> yeah, that's our intention. Because we, we've, we felt that if we could see... Uh, when we say things to you like things like, oh, we can see that you're not haven't you're stagnant, that you're not really progressing. A lot of you have this inf internal feeling immediately, oh, I'm getting told off again. And, you know, that's that's the that's the um, the feel some of the feelings that exist within you, right? That's not what we feel. What we feel is that we've tried to construct these sessions so so that you can identify where 
you know, over the last four, three, four, five years, or however long you've been listening, so that you could identify what's stopping you from really getting into the sincere emotional progress that you need to get into. That's what we've tried to do. And, and our concern for you is that if you let this go on too much longer, this stagnation, you will find yourself getting influenced in all ways to not do it at all. Does that make sense? I'm feeling can, quite demoralised. And you'll feel well. very demoralised, actually. And so what we're trying to do is help you make this transition between actually really feeling it, it to be all a drudgery and a, and a trauma to do all this kind of work into actually enjoying it. And once you start getting to that child, that child, those childlike feelings and start going through that forgiveness process, you'll actually start feeling a, a real joy start to re-enter you in your life. And if you could have a look at your faces sometimes behind the camera and you have an opportunity to do that after you see these, these, this material. Or you could be like me and never watch them. You, you, <laughs> you, will, you will see some of the sadness that's yeah. there, like just the sadness that's present in your face that you've been covering over for so long and the sadness about having to do the work and the resistance and things like that. And, and I feel that would be very beneficial if you could see, see that and then go, that's not how it's going to be in the long run, you know. And if you look at myself as an example in terms of what will happen, do you see me really, really sad very often? Like, you don't, do you? But I've gone through lots of sadness, lots of sadness, but you don't see me sad very often. And the reason why is because once the sadness leaves you, it doesn't taint the rest of your existence anymore. It doesn't taint any of your decisions anymore. So, so what we're trying to do here is help you get through this transition phase, which is the phase of having it all in the head, you know, having all the knowledge there that you've heard for years and years, into actually doing the emotional work that causes the real change. And as I was pointing out earlier to Mel, uh, some of the emotional work is just the acknowledgement of how I really, what I really want to do, what I, what I really feel. That, that is an improvement over being in denial of those feelings. Does that make sense? And this is what we're trying to encourage you to do through the program. So unfortunately tomorrow, though, I, I still haven't covered a whole heap of material about repentance and forgiveness which we are not going to get to do, unfortunately, because of time constraints. We might do a FAQ when we get home, just the two of us, and to, cover that material. To cover that material. And we feel quite strongly with it. We're probably not going to get to the material next week either, given you know, the amount of stuff we have to uh, present that day. So, so we probably, with that material, uh, we're going to create a repentance and forgiveness FAQ session series and so keep an eye out for that over the coming months on YouTube or on your discs or downloads so that you can get more information about that at that time. Can we just see the notes that you would have put up? And I will put all the notes on the can internet. Not, uh, to, like, not tomorrow or in one of the breaks. We can't. I can put up the notes tomorrow during a break or something of, of, yeah. of the, some of the slides. Yeah, yeah that certainly. Would be, yeah, I'd certainly. Like and you will have the outline also on the internet. So okay. all of the material, we've produced outlines for all the material. Once we've finalised our outlines, we'll be uploading the outlines to, um, to the internet, to our website, and you'll be able to actually, eventually you'll be able to, there'll be an outline, there'll be a movie of the actual event, and there will also be the PowerPoint presentation you can download to, to actually flick your way through the material again if you wanted to as well. Does that make sense? So all of that material will be available to you. Yeah. It's been an interesting reflection going back to Mary's workshop to now, like when we were all travelling to Mary's workshop, we were all going, God, 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 please, 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 don't, don't let me project, don't let me project. <laughs> and this workshop we're all coming, please, 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 God, let me be open, let me be open for truth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So in two years' time, I wonder what we're going to be <laughs> pleading I, for. I feel, I feel to be frank with you, most of you have become quite honest with yourself. You're getting better with being honest with yourself. And this is a very good sign. Like, and also most of you, particularly today when you did the feedback session with Corny and Mary, Mary, 
you were, you know, you demonstrated through your answers some quite deep self-reflection, and this is very, very good. And the key is to con the key is it's okay doing it all here, right? In an area where somebody's at you or somebody's, someone's like, yeah, that was great. Somebody's yeah, encouraging you. The key is to do all that work in your own life. That's where it really is become. It does become like that's the critical part of your development, learning how to do all of that work for yourself in your own life. That's where you do your real learning. So here we're just presenting concepts. You're going to do your real learning out there in the world, in your own life. Yeah. Um, tomorrow, you're going to be talking about willpower homework? Um, no. Um, there will be a mixture of things tomorrow. We'll be focusing. I think you can see almost every day we've talked about will, haven't we? Yeah. We've been, we've been saying, uh, talking to you about your will and whether you really have the developed will and what's causing the stoppages to your will. And we've always talked to you about how it's all emotional stoppages. They're all feelings within you that cause you to stop. We, we hope by the end of the entire series, because Mary's got to talk another talk on Saturday about will again. So by the end, we hope that this high concept of will is really quite well established, you know, within, within your mind at least. Um, but we probably won't be getting to, to that subject too much tomorrow, although there are some feedback sessions that we'll get onto the subject. Because there are so many things that we've got to do tomorrow and it's our last day before the last day. Yeah. It's our second of last day that we need to go through and revise a lot of things about repentance and forgiveness and hurt self and facade self. There's all, those four subjects haven't been covered yet in terms of a revision and that's a lot of material to do tomorrow. So I, I doubt very much like we're going to get back to that subject. Can I ask a question about sure it now? Sure you can. Um, if, um, it, you don't have to stay if you don't want to, guys, if, if you feel like you want to leave. We've only got uh, 20, 20 minutes, minutes before dinner before anyway. Dinner. I don't know what you're going to do in that time. But. Um, part of the willpower, sorry, uh, the will homework was um, how do you, oh, one of the, I can't remember exactly the questions, but one of them was something like how do you in, like feed your spiritual, yeah, spiritual growth and yes. how do you... Um, so there was um, how are you going to stretch yourself to overwhelm your will to love yeah. how are you going to do that regularly how, what's what are you going to, how you going to seek out things to feed on spiritual nourishment yep. and how are you going to expose yourself and receive more truth yeah? right in one of those and i can't remember which one my answer was to do more things like the exercises you've suggested in the past like the fearless and the angelus and the list of god's truth versus my truth because whenever i do them it it's always really, really helpful. Yeah. yeah. But my problem is that um, I find it incredible, like I have to exert a huge amount of willpower to actually get around to doing them. Yeah. Um, and what's my question? Um, so what, what I would do is forget about doing them. Okay. And I would focus on, okay, I know I've got to focus my willpower to do it, so why don't I want to do it? What, what inside of me caused me to not... What, what's the feeling inside of me about wanting to do it? Why don't I want to do it? That would be my question. And, I, and I'd say, now, use my willpower, if I'm going to use anything, my willpower to do it, use my willpower to find the answer to that question. Why don't I want to? Because once you resolve that question, you will want to. And once you want to, then your will is engaged in the other processes rather than willpower. Do you follow Yeah, me? it gets... I think it gets back to the... Not wanting to be overwhelmed thing again. A lot of yeah. it will. Uh, some of it will always, uh, you know, these, many of you do not realise that emotions that Mary's mentioned to you very frequently in the past relating to the blockages with regard to feeling like it's hopeless, it's useless, it, it, why bother doing it, I'm never going to change. All of those kind of emotions are emotions that prevent you from exercising your will. They are some of the best emotions to feel because once you've felt them, you will no longer have those emotions influencing everything you do. Yeah, I connected to that just a couple of hours ago for yeah. like just five minutes and then I felt so much better. And yeah. I was terrible yeah. beforehand. So. Yeah, that's right. So the, the key is 
to feel some of these dreadful emotions about your will and what's the point? And sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Um, the point is those emotions feel really, really bad. It's hopeless. You're faceless. You will feel hopeless you when feel, you're feeling them. It's terrible. Yeah. And like you just said, before you feel it, it feels really, 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 really bad. <laughs> and a lot of us, I notice, don't ever want it to get to feeling really, 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 really bad. We go for an addiction. When it gets to really, really, we're like, oh, no, I've had enough now. That's enough of the reallys. Yeah. <laughs> it's too, one too many reallys already. I can't do another three, you yeah. know. But that's what you're going to need to do. Yeah. Just go, 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 go. And then it'll break like a big wave and you'll feel it intensely for a while and then you'll come out of it and go, wow, no, I want to write that list. And you'll actually feel permanently brighter. Does that make sense? Permanently more joyous, permanently more desirous and things like that, rather than it being something you have to manufacture and force. And you'll also be permanently more desirous of finding the solutions. Yep. Cool, thanks. No worries. Okay, well, shall we uh, sojourn to our dinner? Yes? No worries. Thanks for the day, guys.